How many of you know the Bible ends with the spirit and the bride say come? This whole thing really, when you really look at it from start to finish is a thread of love that leads to complete union with Jesus Christ one day, the wedding feast. So he says, at that time, there'll be 10 bridesmaids. And why I love this parable is because it like really hones in on you and I. How many of you are believers in here? Exactly, 100%, I knew that. So with laser focus, it talks of you and I. This is not a parable of the wheat and the tear or the goats and the sheep, you know, the prodigal son coming home. All of these are just as paramount, but this with great focus highlights the church, you and I. It says there'll be 10 bridesmaids. And the more I read this, it's in Solomon's temple. You see these tens and these split in fives, and I won't go there, but he says there's 10. Five of them were foolish, five were wise. How many of you wanna be five wise bridesmaids? As do I. And so you're reading, you're like, man, what separates the two? They all are dressed, they're all virgins and pure. They live pure, they're set apart from the world. They have lamps, listen, which is your, your staple place of intimacy to find the bridegroom. That's what they're in search for, to find him. There even comes to a point in the passage where it says they all got weary from the journey, took a nap. I was thinking this is where Jesus will rebuke them. The foolish that slept too long. You know, how many of you love to sleep a little bit later than, than most? <laughs> yeah, I can relate. Uh, Jesus slept on a boat, though, if you want a scripture for that. Justify that, you know. But he didn't rebuke them there. How many of you know just there's casualties? Sometimes you get weary in, in the journey, and that's okay. So all of a sudden he says he splits them he says the five foolish didn't have enough oil in their lamps the five wise brought extra oil some versions say you fast forward about midnight they all fell asleep about midnight which speaks of a new day how many you want to step through into a new day at midnight there's a new it always transitions into a new day but also it's the darkest hour so it's really prophetic as things increase but at midnight, it says Jesus came, the bridegroom came. There was a shout, he's here. They all woke up. The five wise had enough oil to, for their lamps to continue burning, to step through that doorway that we later see he shuts behind them and it's the wedding feast. It's becoming one with Jesus Christ. Well, the five foolish didn't have enough oil. They had to go back. We all know the passage, come back and the door was already shut then. And listen, this is, I, I don't like that it's in there, but it's in there. They knock, said, Jesus, open the door. He looks at him, he says, I don't know you. He says, I do not know you. Matthew 7, the, the, I'm just seeing it more and more in this hour that Jesus puts so much weight on whether he really knows you or not. Listen, man, it's all there. He doesn't, you don't step before him one day and him go, wow, amazing miracles you worked. You preach so well. No, I'm telling you, he looks where he, he burns to know you intimately, man. That's what I love, man, what Joshua and, and, and they were preaching. It's, just, it's, into, it's knowing him in from that, of course, the great commission. Are you kidding me? And Paul says, earnestly covet the gifts. We prophesy, we heal the sick, cast out devils. But I'm watching Jesus, and, and it all goes back there to him. You know, I don't know you intimately. And he burns that he does not, and he burns if he does in such a passionate way. The, the powerful preachers from Matthew 7, it says, uh, many will come to me on that day. It all comes through this doorway of knowing him. That's why Paul's like, look, everything's garbage compared to the infinite value of knowing you, Jesus, that I could be one with you. You can see it in his writings. It's all he burned for while he raised the dead, while he cast out devils, while he wrote epistles and burned for the church and the souls. And, but, but it all went back to that doorway. And I pray it possesses us in this hour. And uh, so, so uh, Matthew 7 Many came to him. He says, there'll be many, not just a handful. Many will come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out devils in your name? Prophesy in your name, not attempt to. These guys were gunning in the gifts. If we looked at their current resume, we'd be like, Psh, hand them the mic. These are the go-to preachers. Again, hear me, I, we do all this, you know, understand. That's why I was loving the swirl, man. They'd be getting rocked. And, but you heard them, they, they undergirded it by intimacy, which is so beautiful. Did we not do many mighty exploits in your name? They brought their bag of exploits before the Lord. And again, the Lord is like amazing, but look, I never knew you. It's very different. The bridesmaids, he says, I do not know you, meaning currently. 
Meaning there was a point. How many of you know we can know him in the past, but it not be kept fresh and current? The bridesmaids, he looked, he says, no, I knew you. You had oil, but it fell off. It weaned. You got distracted. You cared more about Martha, whatever it may be. And uh, I don't know you right now anymore. I did, but I do not. What's wild is that no he used there, it says to know by seeing. It's a deep, personal, applicable knowledge, contact, firsthand relationship that it, where he says, I do not know you now. It's, it's, it's a no to know by seeing firsthand. John, I was in this the other day, 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. He was a possessed man. He didn't even beat around the bush to say, hey, John, Jesus' favorite, you know. Paul would like a bond servant of Christ. They would at least give you an intro, intro so you knew who wrote the book. John, did, he just comes right out of the gate. I bring to you who he who was from the beginning. He just, he's so possessed. He comes out of the gate, Jesus. Just, he doesn't even care if you know who, who writes the book. And immediately, he says, I, we bring to you who I've seen with my own eyes, touched with my own hands, heard with my own ears. It was intimate. One on one. I don't even know we got to have the secret place. That's where I'm getting at. This pull, this possession. Husbands, you can't take the bread for your wife. Wives, parents for children. It's got to be one-on-one -on -one intimacy. Go into your closet, shut the door behind you, partaking of the bread of life in such a deep way. So, um, but the preachers, ironic enough, he says, I never knew you. You understand the difference? They, they tapped into gift, anointing, gifts, sorry, anointing. The word won't return void. And he says, I never knew you. And that word know there is the same word Mary used for saying, I never knew Joseph intimately. It's a very deep intimate. This is what he's looking for. I'm telling you, he's looking for a bride, pure and full of power and bold and, and taking the gospel, you know, martyrs. I'm, I'm for all of it. I'm just saying at the end of the day, may we step through this door and he'd be like, yeah, yeah, I know you. I know you real well. You burn for me. You, when I say barely slightly move to the right, you move. You don't care what they think. Uh, you're possessed by him and his voice. And, uh, you know, you, a lot of you guys know better than me how that's sustained day in and day out, just being with him. How many of you know to know somebody, you've got to be with them intimately? And so I want to encourage you guys just to uh, start taking being with him. As, and sometimes, depending on where we're at, discipline is needed. That's biblical too. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, the day you seek me with all of your heart, that's the day you'll find me. Hebrews, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. James if you draw near to God, the initiation's on your part, then he'll draw near to you. So that's all throughout scripture, but also he's the greatest delight ever. So I love it all. Discipline, delight, just, just be with him. You guys get what I'm talking about. And um, so I want to mainly, mainly propose that before us today, that we'd be a people prophesying virgins with lamps, whatever it may be. Sorry. <laughs> you think this is a breakout session. Um, <laughs> but that we would be a people that are so wrapped up and bent on knowing him. You can see it in Paul's writings. Peter, the same. Look, he, Peter, Second Peter, his last epistle to the church, he literally, he, he builds bookends on the whole book. He says, may you grow in the grace and knowledge of him. He's like, now let me tell you about things that are super, super important. And then he goes to land the epistle again. He goes, listen to me, grow in the knowledge of him. It's all there. Look, in Luke, where Jesus said Peter would deny him, Jesus used that same word, that applicable knowing. He goes, you'll deny that you know me three times. It meant so much to Jesus. He's like, and the thing is, you really know me, but you'll deny it that you do. Well, no, he corrects it when he's raised from the dead with the breakfast and says, do you love me three times? It's beautiful. But this knowing Jesus, you know, I, I really pray that we would take it to such a greater depth of uh, it, it being really the pinnacle of who we are and what we do more and more. Is this making sense to some of you guys? Yeah. Because, listen, I've seen it. These people are a possessed bunch. They're just a different breed. You can get around them, and you hear how they talk about him. They're different. They're very, very different. I've seen gifted, and I love it. I'm like, I need to lay hands on me. I want it. But the people that are caught up in, in love, they're a different breed. And the enemy's like, man, I can't stop them. I, I, I can't get foxes into their world because they're so possessed by him. They live pure because they, they gaze at he who is holy. They abide in him. They fear the Lord. They're so possessed with, with him that nothing else makes sense, you know. And in this, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like this, these bridesmaids with oil, I mean, bucket loads. I used to say, well, I say buckets. Started getting near Corey Russell, dear friend. He's amazing. He was like, yeah, we need the barrels of oil. I was like, barrels, man. He took it to a whole nother level. I didn't even think like that. He's like, that's the word of the Lord, barrels. I was like, wow. 
the whole point is, look, extra oil, which I, I condone and, and just propose that is only produced in the secret place. You notice the wise virgins, they were like, look, I can't give you my oil. This is a very person. This is my lamp. This is how I know him by seeing him because my flame's so bright. I have, I have oil, endless oil, because he, he's everything to me. And, uh, you, you know, I can't give you my, my secret place. You can't give me yours, but it's that locking away. But Jesus, devouring his word. How many of you know we need to devour this thing in this hour? Shut all the voices off. Blow the dust off this thing and just go deep, all of it. Start to finish the fun stuff, the hard stuff. And uh, go deep, deep in the word. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Man, I love that. Just praying. How many of you know we need to pray in tongues? I've been sensing that lately, uh, even from a recent dream I saw where I was preaching somewhere, that people's souls are getting real strong right now because of what they're taking in. They're, they're taking in a lot of outside voices and noise and currents that aren't from the Lord. And so, sometimes you need to bust that right in the face and you can pray in tongues. Paul says it strengthens your inner man. I thank God that I pray in tongues more than all of you. Just trust the mystery. You know, some of you are like, I don't feel like I'm making sense. Welcome to the party. Me too. I'm like, ha ha, ta ta ta. Haba haba, you know. <laughs> I don't say just go for it. The Bible says you're speaking mysteries to God. So just let it rip, man.